In part two of this lesson, where we draw resonance structures and assign formal charges for organic compounds, we ended off with question two, and that reads, draw the Lewis structure, including resonance structures, for diazomethane, which has the chemical formula CH2N2. For each resonance structure, assign formal charges to all atoms that have formal charges. With that being said, when it comes to drawing Lewis structures for organic compounds, the order in which the atoms are in dictates how they look like in that structure, where they are. So starting with CH2, we have the central atom C with the two hydrogens. They already have a complete octet and four electrons have already been used up. And that's connected to nitrogen and another nitrogen. Now that we've done this, let's count the complete number of valence electrons that we have to work with. Hydrogen has one, one, carbon four, that's six, five, plus 6 is 11, plus another 5 is 16. So we have 16 to work with, and already 8 are gone. So we have 8 left. Those 8 will be distributed here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We have an issue, of course. Carbon does not have a complete octet. This does not have a complete octet, neither does that. So we need to shuffle around some of the electrons. So let's move these two electrons here, and these two electrons here. Notice what happens. We now have a double bond. You see, there's a double bond. This nitrogen no longer has any lone pairs. And here we have a double bond. So we have a complete octet, complete octet, complete octet, and these are complete. That's one way to do it. Another way that this could be done is if we go back to the original, we could give these electrons here. So we have a triple bond. Let's rewrite this. Carbon in the middle, two hydrogens, nitrogen, one, two, three, and here we have these two electrons left over. So this has a complete octet, that's good. This, on the other hand, has 10 electrons. So we can bring these electrons right here, and now look what happens. Complete octet, complete octet, complete octet. This represents another resonance structure. Interestingly, these are the only two resonance structures that exist. Now we have to find the formal charge to determine which one is most likely to occur. Let's start with the first one, 1. Using this formula for formal charge, we take the number of valence electrons for an atom. Let's take this one, for example. The valence electrons for nitrogen is 5. 5 minus the number of non-bonding electrons, so 1, 2, 3, 4, plus the number of bonding electrons. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, and between these two nitrogens, we take that number divided by 2. Or simply, you just count the number of lines. So 4 plus 2, 5 minus 6 is negative 1. This has a negative 1 charge. What about this nitrogen? 5 minus no lone pairs plus half the number of bonding electrons. So 8 divided by 4 is 4. This is positive 1. Doing that for carbon, you should end up with 0 or neutral. Let's do this one. For this nitrogen, we have 5 minus 2 plus 3. That means it's 0. This is neutral. For that, 5 minus 0 plus 4. That's positive 1, so this is positive 1. Over here, 4 minus 2 plus 3, that's negative. So which one do we choose? Given that nitrogen is more electronegative than carbon, this is more likely to happen than this. So this is the resonance structure that is preferred. And there you have it. That is how to draw resonance structures and assign formal charges to organic compounds.